Hey, 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 it is March and we are talking all things website this month. And so I'm excited to have Kara Duncan here today to talk to us a little bit about copy and how that translates on our website. How do we need to think about the copy on our website? How do we need to show up? Um, and how can we use it to our advantage so that our website is working for us, as she says. Um, I think this is going to be awesome because a lot of times we think about the design of our website. And yes, that's important. We're going to talk about that a little bit too. But without the right words, without people feeling like they are being spoken to, that they are part of the solution, it's going to be harder for them to convert on their own. So Kara is the creator of the Kara Report. And after seeing wedding pros and other creatives burn themselves out on Instagram, she created that report. Kara brings actionable advice when it comes to marketing your business in a sustainable way. The goal? By balancing fast and slow marketing methods, you can stop stressing over where your next lead is coming from and actually enjoy serving your clients instead. Today, she offers done-for-you marketing services for small business owners who just want to take marketing off their plate. And this is where copy comes into play. It's 100% true that when we have the right calls to action, the right language, the right layout of our website, it's going to convert better. And that's going to mean more donations for us, more volunteers, more participants in our programs, more all the things. So I hope you take a listen to this episode and put some of these elements into action. Okay, you with me? I'm excited. Before we get into it, this episode is brought to you by our quiz, Should You DIY Your Website? Now, if you're listening to this episode or just anything this month and you're thinking that maybe your website needs a bit of an overhaul before you start reaching out to potential developers and designers, before you start really even thinking about budget, time, and is this even possible, take this free quiz. It's at thefirstclick.net forward slash quiz. And I want you to do this because it's going to tell you where you're at and if you should be doing it yourself, if you should be hiring somebody, or if you're somewhere in the middle. It's going to give you resources and tools to help you figure that out so you can have a less frustrating, less costly experience. So again, that's at thefirstclick.net forward slash quiz. Let's get into the episode. You're listening to the Digital Marketing Therapy Podcast. I'm your host, Sammy Vidal Mulhern. Each month, we dive deep into a digital marketing or fundraising strategy that you can implement in your organization. Each week, you'll hear from guest experts, nonprofits, and myself on best practices, tips, and resources to help you raise more money online and reach your organizational goals. Hey there, please join me in welcoming Kara Duncan to the podcast. Kara, thank you so much for being here. Ah, thank you so much for having me. Um, so we are talking all things website copy today. Uh, so before we kind of jump into that, why is copy and why are websites something that you love to geek out on and are super passionate about? Yeah, I think like, I just believe that your website should be working for you kind of like 24 hours a day. It's like truly a home base for your customers. I know you talk so much about marketing on your podcast and it's like truly like your marketing is so much more effective when I believe anyway, when all roads lead back to your website. So specifically like with website copy, I like to say it does three things for you. One, it helps you rank on Google. Two, it will help you kind of like weed out, like repel the wrong people, warm up the right mm. people. And then three, ideally it will guide your viewer to the next step. And ideally it's doing all of that while you're sleeping or working on other important things, right? Just like constantly, right. uh, yeah, one of the best tools that you don't, you know, unlike an employee that you pay, your it just works for you. Um, we could not be in more alignment with any of those things that you said. I mean, like that's, we're spot on. I love that. Everything you said, totally agree. Um, so copy is the words that show up on your website. And I firmly believe that the copy is more important than the design. Why do you think people get that twisted in their head? Like they want something that looks beautiful, but that's not what gets people to convert, right? Yeah, I could not agree more. Like I'm always like so hesitant to say that copy is more important than design because obviously I don't think that people will read like a like paragraphs and paragraphs of stuff. Um, 
But I just think I have seen time and time again, people buy a beautiful website template and they kind of like play around with it. And then their website, I always say like gets nothing but compliments. Like people don't know how to buy from you. They don't really know what you do, but like everyone keeps saying it's so pretty. And I think it's because for the most part, design is like more fun. It's more exciting. Like honestly, we could have that conversation about marketing, like how people love to like tinker around on Instagram versus like other sustainable things. Right. It's like, it is. And again, I might be biased here, but I'm just like, you can buy a beautiful aesthetic website template, but without the copy, like it just kind of falls flat, although it can look pretty and it's easier to get kind of like somewhat good at design and I don't want to disrespect designers because I think like there's so much power in design. Oh yeah. But versus like mucking around with your copy and like, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess maybe the way to say it would be like you, um, if you just have a beautifully designed website, you're leaving money on the table versus like there's people that make millions of dollars off ugly websites because they have the copy correct. They know who they're talking to and they make it easy for people to make a purchase. Right. So it's almost like, it's not to say design doesn't matter, but if you don't have the right copy, then you definitely are not going to be uh, hitting the mark with your visitors. Yeah, for sure. And like, that's the thing about design too. It's like one of the main purposes that design has is like helping your viewer read what you've written, right? And it's like, for so many people, words are an afterthought, but it's like yeah. design can't sell your services for you. It can't ask people to like donate to your nonprofit or sign up to volunteer or whatever. It can't get people to sign up for your email list. Like all of that, it needs to be the words. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. So if we're taking a look at our website and we're like, okay, I'm not getting the right conversions or I'm not seeing kind of the, this website's not working for me when I'm sleeping and I need a little bit more action. Where would you start with kind of reviewing the language that's, that's there? Yeah. So the first thing I, I'm like you, I feel like I always like to dive into the data first. So the first thing I would do is like head to Google analytics, see where people are dropping off. Uh, if you are a more visual person, I always recommend something like Hotjar so you can kind of watch your users navigate your website in real time and then see where the design or the copy is kind of throwing them off and go from there. Um, I also kind of talked about or wanted to mention, I know this is like a common thing, but like with Donner, Donald Miller in this story brand when he talks about mm -hmm. the grunt test and it's like every single <laughs> we're every single website page basically you want them to answer what do you offer how will it make your life better and how do I get it and instead of you doing it I always highly recommend asking somebody outside of your industry if they can quickly ask those answer those questions because truly like I I see one of the things I see when I'm doing like a copy audit for someone is they are too close to it. They don't see the gaps that are like very obvious to someone who has no idea what they do. Well, I think that's true because we are so into our business. We know, okay, I know where the next step is. I know where the next step is. Like, I know I have it all mapped out. Like I've seen how this goes, but you, you can't really, uh, it's hard to poke holes in your own thing. So I think that's great advice to have like, we do this with our clients when we launch a website, have somebody find this thing. And if they can't find it, then we need to go tweak and tweak and refine. It's the same. Like you don't edit your own copy, right? Cause you, you read it exactly. the way that you envision it in your own head. Um, yeah. So what, forget how close we are like, to it. <laughs> yeah, I know. So like, what is one, like if we were going to say, okay, like here is a critical place to start. Like, where do you see people making the biggest mistakes uh, with copy on their websites? I would say if you're going to start somewhere, headlines, like revamping your headlines and obviously calls to action. Another, 
I guess actually let's talk about calls to action. So one of the biggest mistakes I see is people are driving them straight to like the sale, whether the sale point means contact page or donate page or whatever. It's like straight there, straight there. And like, instead, when I'm working on a website copy project, I'll be like, okay, exactly what journey do I want the person to take? And even though maybe like in a perfect world, somebody's going to read my homepage and then instantly go to where I want them to go. The reality is, if I take them to like the about us page and then a little bit, you know, schedule a call or something like that, or learn more about donating or volunteering or whatever. It's like, then by the time they reach the page I want, which maybe let's say is the contact page, they're much warmer. Right. So it's like, in a way, like taking them on a longer journey, even though it's kind of like counterintuitive, everyone's like, the less steps people take, the better. (laughs) It's like, really, if your copy is good, you're warming people up so much more along the way. And then the people that are hitting your contact form are like ready. Mm -hmm. Well, I think what you're talking about is, is understanding how to get the right message to the right people at the right time. So we can't assume that everybody who lands on our homepage is ready to make a donation, but the people that are ready to make a donation are going to click that donate button and just go through that process. Right. So you have to think about it from a multi multi multi-journey approach. Yeah. And that's such a good point because I always say like with a social media post or something like that, it's always like one call to action, one call to action. And on your website, you really can have different people in different places and it's okay to kind of show them different paths that they can take. So can you share, cause I think we assume a call to action is a call to purchase. So could you share some other examples of what, what some calls to action might be on a website? Yeah, absolutely. So it could be like asking them to sign up for your email list so you can nurture them further. It could be having them read, you know, your blog posts where I always feel like blogs are one of the like most underrated features on your website because they can like the people that are interested in your organization or business or whatever it is, they will binge it if they're interested, right? So um, that could be a call to action. Head over to our blog. I always like to, and I feel like I'm bringing up social media a lot, but it's just so all interconnected. I always try and get people to come find me on Instagram and then I can, you know, warm them up further there. Like, yeah. And then, yeah, anything like learn more about our team, Mm -hmm. learn how to work with us, et cetera, instead of just straight to contact us or donate now. Yeah. Um, Okay. So one of the big mistakes that I see with copy on websites is that we talk too much about ourselves and don't talk about uh, what we do from the perspective of the person who's visiting. So if I'm looking at my website and I want to refresh my copy, like, do you have, like when you're working through this with clients, like how do you get them into that framework of like, let's talk about the pain point that you solve. Let's talk about how you solve it. Let's talk about how you can engage with the visitor as opposed to like, being, it's almost like being the person who shows up at the networking event. That's like, Hey, my name is Jill and I do this and you should donate to me right now. Right? Like that's how our websites often show up to people. Yeah, for sure. So I (laughs) am like crazy when I write copy, I have like everything on the table. Um, but basically what I always tell people is, well, one of my favorite quotes is by like famous copywriter, Eugene Schwartz, who says copy isn't written, it's assembled. And so it's like, The first thing I do is like go through like old contact forms. Like what have people reached out saying? And like, cause those are questions your website is not answering or, or like, even if it's not a question, it's like these people needed to hear X, Y, Z to get them over the edge. And like, that is invaluable. If your organization has reviews or anything like that, like I love digging into that because obviously sometimes we think like, Oh, we solved their problem by, XYZ and they're like, no, this was my problem. <laughs> and it was like, mm-hmm. and more importantly, this is how I felt when it was solved. So yeah. I always like to like start with those two building blocks before I even do anything. Like, what are people actually saying when they reach out? And what do people actually want? How do they feel after working with you? Yeah. Sense. Well, cause I think we overcomplicate it. We want to come up with all this like fancy marketing jargon and like, mm-hmm. we need to like say all these cool things and like whatever, but it's really just as simple as, um, using the words that are being spoken to you. So if you don't have testimonials or you don't have contact forms, it could be, you know, literally just having one-on-one conversations with the people that are your ideal 
I, Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I know sometimes I'll be like writing a website and by the end of it, it's like, I wonder how much of it I actually wrote. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, I took bits and pieces here, bits and pieces here. Like, and it's like you said, another great place is just conversations with people. Yeah. So, okay. So homepage is like one thing I feel like, um, I like what you said about like, if people like what you're saying and they engage with you, they're going to dive deeper into content. Um, so like if we're in the middle of a refresh, if we're going to kind of think more clearly about the copy, like, do we have to change the whole website at once or is it okay to kind of just go through and like prioritize kind of like you said, based off of what we know are the most, uh, visited pages on our website? Yeah. In general, I would start with just the most visited pages. I don't think every time you need to burn it all down and start, (laughs) start again, for sure. Um, I would say like, I typically, depending on your timeline for the project. So like if you're updating a page kind of every like three or four months when you have time, maybe don't do this. But if you're like, going to steadily work on the project. I like to save the homepage for last because it really is like homepages are the hardest, right? And sometimes when you write it first, but then you might switch direction or, you know, edit something or, you know, use all of your, I want to say like nuggets. Like sometimes you write a piece of copy and you're like, oh, this is the best. And you put it on your homepage, but it's like all the pages have to be good. (laughs) Yeah. Right? So it's like when you use everything on your homepage, even though the homepage has to be good, I find it easiest to write last. Well, your homepage is almost like the outline for your whole website yeah. that leads people to a deeper dive. So I, I think that makes sense because if you don't, it's like um, we talk a lot on this podcast, a lot of our guests have talked about this too, about reverse engineering, right? Like going from the yeah. end and taking it forward and, um, if we know that the website is going to be the starting point for the donor journey, right? The top of the funnel, we want to pull people through. We should reverse engineer the way that we write the copy as well. Yeah, for sure. And like, just to comment on that, a lot of one missed opportunity that I frequently see on contact pages is like, there's just a form. And then once they submit the form, there's nothing to do next where I'm like, there should always be something to do immediately after, because after they're like, obviously not going to hear from you immediately. Right. And they're going to be looking for something to do. And I don't know if this is as much of an issue in the nonprofit space, but I know like with businesses I work for, it's like, you know, if you're a wedding photographer or something like that, you don't want them to then just go on to the next wedding photographer, <laughs> reaching out to multiple yeah. people. right? Like When they hit submit on a contact form, it's such a like, crucial time to like get them to warm up even more whether that's like immediately scheduling a call or be like in the meantime these blog posts might be helpful or learn more about our team here while you know we get back to you in two days or whatever yeah we definitely want immediate gratification yeah totally (laughs) we all do I mean and I I think submitting a contact form is a huge sign of intent and so yeah to your point like that's Mm. if I'm taking the steps and the action to do that I want something now. So I love that. That's a, like, that's a great tip. Um, so like, how do we, cause you know, like now there's copywriters everywhere and, um, it feels like it's a science and we kind of get in our own heads. So kind of how can we, I liked your tip about like go through the old content, but mindset wise, like how can we kind of say to ourselves, like, I can do this. Like I know enough about my organization. Like, you know, there is a time and place to hire a copywriter, but how can we get out of our own way and, and get started um, with writing about our organization for our website? Oh, that's a good question. Okay. I have a random thought on this that might not be, but like, honestly, this is one of the things that I'm starting to use AI writing tools for. Yeah. Not that you're going to necessarily like steal the headline it provides or, you know, I don't think it's quite at the point where it will write your website for you. But when I'm staring at a blank page, like you just need to generate ideas. And so that honestly really helps me get out of my funk as like I use Jasper personally, but I know there's like a million out there right now. And it seems like all everyone's talking about. So um, mindset wise, I mean, it's always just so hard to get started. That's why it's kind of nice to start one 
page at a time or even one headline at a time. Like most people are just skimming your headlines. Like I always remind myself of that too. Uh, people are not reading every single word, right? So if you're just, you know, if you just make one headline on your website better every single day or week or whatever you have time for, like that makes such a big difference. Um, so yeah, I would start there, but then sometimes when you just need to get ideas in a page, like I think that's what AI is really good for right now. I uh, agree with that. We are not copy paste people, my listener friends. We do not take <laughs> no. and copy paste from AI. It will not sound like you. It will not sound authentic. <laughs> but I love that tip of like using it to not start from a blank page because I agree with you. Like mm. that, I am always so much better when I have something to kind of edit and work off of versus like uh, that cur- that blinking cursor. There's something about it that's just like oh. I don't even know how to think anymore. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a thing. But like. You just now you're staring at it and you're like, like all of a sudden you have lost everything that you know about the work that you do and and who you serve. So how much does who you serve play into also like how we talk and the way that we write? Because I think that's the other thing we hear from a lot of nonprofits is we need to be very formal or we need to be very professional or we need to do like we're supposed to show up in a certain way. But that's not always the case because it really is dependent on who we're talking to so how much uh should we be taking into consideration like our ideal donor or our community when we're writing copy for our website oh gosh yeah I feel like it's everything (laughs) do you know what I mean like they yeah it's and honestly yeah that's that's one of the things too like I just finished reading get different by Mike Michalowicz and I probably better get blessing. Um, but one of the things he said is sometimes like if you're in an industry that is like so standard one way, you can stand out even more by being another way. So it's to your point, it's like if all of your competitors are super formal and super professional and stuff, it can really honestly work in your favor to kind of go the other direction. And yeah, honestly, that's why I like to start with reviews and contact form things because I want to know how like the real people they're serving talk. Mm -hmm. I think it's everything. Well, and you mentioned something at the beginning about how like your website is also meant to help self-select people that aren't the right fit for you. And so um, that's a great point too. And like understanding kind of like your style of copy might upset people or might not, I shouldn't say upset. That's very dramatic. Yeah. yeah, Don't want to upset I don't know what what kind of (laughs) But like it might not be the right style or feel or process, but that's okay because you want the people that are the right ones for you. Absolutely. And like I always find like a, one of the things you can kind of like price anchor in your copy a little bit, right? Like, so for example, I'm going to use another, I work with a lot of wedding people uh, and it's like, okay, so if you're a wedding planner, you can be like, you know, whether you're spending 50000 or 500000 on your website you're already immediately repelling the DIYers, right? Because they're like 50,000. Do you know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. That is like a very simple piece of copy that is not necessarily going to like offend them, but they're going to be like, oh, this is not for me. Right? But like how if they go all the way to a contact call and then you get on the phone with them and now you've wasted an hour with them on the call doing a consult and then you find out that you're way out of their budget, you've wasted your time and their time. For what purpose? So I think that's and yeah, time. That's and I feel like, sorry, really that's just like something I feel passionate about too. Cause it's like so many times we're like, Oh, I feel bad. Like saying, you know, like this, let's cancel this call. Like this isn't going to be a good fit or whatever, but it's like, it's not just your time. Like it's also their time. <laughs> and like, for me, like, this is why I, I appreciate the psychology behind like hiding pricing or whatever, but it's like, I also value my time. So it's kind of like one of those things, right? Another place where we are in complete alignment. Um, I love that. Uh, And I think in the nonprofit space where we see that is that self-selection of the donation amount on the donation page. People are scared to um, say, like to have uh, pre-selected a certain dollar amount. Well, what if that's too high and people don't want to give? And I think that's also the power of the copy that, is next to that decision-making process, right? Like we can use that language all the way through to that end point 
to continue to show them why this is important and why this is what they need they need to be doing. Yeah, you're right. Because there's such a range of nonprofits. There's nonprofits that are like, donate just a dollar today, <laughs> right? <laughs> like something like if you're not that, that's a great yeah. way to self-select. I love that. Okay. Well, um, I think you've given people some good tips for trying not to overwhelm organizations with too many things to do. So if you are going to tell listeners, um, kind of one of your best tips, hidden secrets, favorite things about copy that they should take away, what would that be? Oh gosh. (laughs) <laughs> Let me just think. I know I put you on the spot. I did not yeah. come up with that question. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I would just say, um, like we talked about this a little in the episode, but it's like truly nothing is about you, even your about page. Right. So it's yeah. like that is like one thing. Like your about page is all about how you can help them or, you know, that kind of thing. Like truly nothing in your website is about you. And that's honestly a good thing. Cause that means when people don't identify with you, you don't have to take that personally either. <laughs> right. Like yeah. it's actually a good thing. So yeah. Um, I love that. I think that's fantastic. I think to me, that is the hardest part about writing copy. Um, because we just are so, it's just so much easier to talk about here's what I do. Here's what I do. Here's what I do. And here's why you should care. That flip is, is really difficult. So a good reminder to keep in the back of our heads. Um, well, Kara, I thank you for spending this time with us today and sharing these tips. If people want to find out more about you, how they can learn from you, all of your resources, how do they do that? Yeah, you can head to head to my website. It's where I have everything (laughs) at, uh, the Kara report.com. Yep. And that's Kara with a K. Yeah. Yeah, all spelled yep. out. Yeah, and we'll link that up in the show notes so it's easy for you all to find. Well, Kara, thank you so much for being a guest today. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I love your podcast. I really appreciate oh. it. Thank you. Thank you again to Kara for joining me on this episode and sharing her copywriting tips. I know that I am in the process of updating a few pages of my own website and excited to kind of have some of these refreshers as I work through those processes. For now, if you want to grab the resources she mentioned or check out the show notes, you can do that at the first click dot slash 195. And always you can find us on YouTube at digital marketing therapy um, at the first click dot slash podcast. And make sure you subscribe wherever you stream these episodes so that we can show up in front of more nonprofits that need this support as well. Thank you so much for listening week after week, and we will see you in the next one.